What can I tell you? It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. All right, you guys, super simple dish. You just need some corn on the cobs, maybe a little green onion. If you want or not, tahini, a little lime spicy seasoning, the best. I got some Valentina in my bottle here. We got a brush for putting on our mayo sour cream mix as adhesive so we can get our Parmesan cheese rolled on, but we also need to boil these boys and do some things, but really easy dish, couple ingredients, but a huge flavor saver big pop big pop real nice love it okay so a couple tiny little preps obviously my grocery storage kind of just gave them to me like this a couple hairs on them or psyllium husk or whatever you want to call it but uh obviously you gotta peel your corn we know this this is uh, 101 get your parm on a plate and then i'm gonna go for our adhesive i'm gonna go half sour cream half mayo you can do it whatever you want. You could do full mayo if you want. You could do full sour cream if you want. I just like this way because you get the flavor sensation of the best of both worlds. You get to have um, like the fattiness of the mayo and then also that like sharpness of the sour cream, right? That's the idea, but I like the, uh, the in-between zone. So that's what I use here. So we do that, we just blend this up. That's what we're gonna apply. <laughs> that to the corn with and then we have to obviously do the next step which is to boil the corn all right so pop the top once we got rolling rolling boil steam release watch your hands don't get don't burn yourself do not burn yourself we got three cobs going in these are going to go in for probably like i don't know five ish five seven minutes you keep an eye you like to do what you like to do at your house but at my house five to seven minutes all right and then we got tiny little prep task for those who like a couple knife skills in videos. I don't know why I'm even including this. We all know we have to chop the onion, but we finally mince the green onion. And these probably aren't really even as fine as they should be, but that's fine. Because once again, I'm at my house. You do what you do at your house. But when we're at my house, just things get done. But they, I would prefer them to be a little thinner for sure. But what else? It's kind of decoration. It's a little bit of flavor, but it's mostly decoration, in all honesty. So, corn is boiled and it's ready for its next adventure. And what is that? Being burned alive. But we're gonna do it maybe medium half. We don't wanna get too crazy with it, but we do want a nice char on it because char is where the flavor lies. So, home hack for you. Turn on your little flame ski, and then you got yourself a grate of some sort, maybe from your toaster oven, like mine. You put it on your flame, and you put your flame to where you aim for, maybe, yeah, like mid like that, and then you just bring in your corn to be boiled first alive, and then burned alive. Ow, my hand, that hurts. Uh, we gonna, we're gonna use tongs now, from here on out, but see, it's very instant. We just have to rotate and move it all around and we do piece by each to get the charred effect because that is flavor. Carcinogens are flavor. We know this on this channel. We shout out carcinogens all the time. So carcinogens are flavor and I omitted the tongs, but uh, I'll do them off camera. But you get what I mean. This is what I'm telling you. Home hack, this thing, burned alive, boiled alive, double the trouble. What a life that corn lives. All right, so here's how it's gonna go. One perfect example. We bring in our charred corn, eh? and we come in with a layer of shmeo, and we lather on the shmeo, and it's called shmeo because it's sour cream and mayo mixed together. And we paint it just like Vincent Van Gogh. And then we cut our ear off later on. No, we don't. We don't do that. But we, we do, we do though. We do give it tender love and care with the shmeo. We shmeo all over it. And uh, you know, it gets the board messy, but you know, that, that kind of helps in a sense too, right? But yes, we shmeo. So we shmeo first. Mm. And we lick in the, in the meantime. And then we come in over here. I have to change the angle, bear with me. All right, angle secured. So we come in with our shmeo corn and we just do a roly roly poly. 
into our parmesan and you go as heavy as you like uh, I don't like to go too thick I try to keep it even Steven on the playing ground all around here but uh, you know it is what it is sometimes it gets a little thick in certain areas but yeah you roll it like that and then we come back to the board okay and now that we're back at the board we come in with the, the tahini right we want our little bit of this little bit of flavor here right maybe in the front cam there for you okay so boom and while that happens we got that on there then what do we do we're gonna come in with that drip. So we just drip on the Valentina. You do it how you wanna do it, as much as you like, right? We're all in our own houses here. And then we come in with the, it's a flavor pop, it's a flavor profile, but it's also decorative. So we come in with our flavor profile decoratives. And there you have yourself one perfect elote. And now we repeat process, we stack them on a plate, we look at the beauty, and then we eat them. And so when process is complete, we end up with a finished dish that looks just like this. Beautiful, delicious, easy, simple, amazing. Let's put our face in it. All right, yo, what up, what's going on? Today we channel our Latin heritage roots actually just shout out i don't have any of those obviously i'm the whitest guy on earth okay we know this that said though their food <laughs> it's two guns it's always two guns mexican food is is it's incredible tortillas who doesn't like tortillas mole who doesn't like mole okay uh, elote sounds like eloping that's a marriage issue not an issue. Could be. While well, you're avoiding issues. But you know what I mean. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is Latin heritage food, Mexican food, is delicious. I wasn't put on to this, this creation until I want to say like five years ago maybe. It became a thing in the muck space. Definitely. And I honestly would say that I think it came... Uh, Somebody, a, a major proponent of it was Wendy's Eating Show. If you guys remember Wendy's Eating Show, well, we all know she's got like a million something subscribers and she was so nonchalant about YouTube, <laughs> which is something you don't see often. So shout out Wendy's Eating Show. She killed it, but she always did the Flamin' Hots. Anyways, this is a more, I guess, maybe traditional street corn, but it's an amazing dish if you've never made it. It's so perfect it's just balanced it just makes sense so we're gonna i don't know how to do this okay you know what we'll just keep these guys kind of here sorry i'm passionate right now about this but it's amazing it's so good like we'll explain it after we eat it but let's get into the sounds like this is a savage dish too like you have that typewriter and get it messy so let's go What can I tell you? I skipped over the typewriter. <laughs> you guys ever notice that food tastes better when you close your eyes? <laughs> Why is that? Is that out? It seems to be true. What an amazing <laughs> invention. Whoever invented this deserves a prize of some sort. I don't know, Grammy, Pulit Pulitzer, however you say that word. Nobel. Isn't that a peace prize? All I'm saying is this. Is this dish is Michelin. It's Michelin. Because it understands 
every aspect of balance in terms of combination you have the natural sweetness of the corn right unbelievable then you got char the carcinogenic deep char flavor Then you have the Parmesan, which is elementally at the, at the core value of what it's supposed to bring to the table is salty. So you got salt. Then you got acid from the tahini with the lime. And you got heat from also in the tahini, but also in the, the Valentina, the hot sauce. And then a little sprinkle of green onion for some freshness. Like, come on. It is a complete and total package of sensory, you know, taste bud, uh, wiggle worm spectrum ride like it just takes you for a ride and that's why it's amazing and i think personally if i do say so myself what a lot of uh, what a lot of uh, mexican food does it understands balance i mean lots of cuisines do that's that what that's what makes good cuisine <clears throat> Mexican cuisine, Latin cuisine understands it. Spectrum wide, completely. And like I said, I didn't get put onto this. This one's a little mashed up and sloppy from being the bottom of the, the pile. But I didn't understand this. I didn't even know what this was until like five years ago, working in the restaurant industry. A place in Toronto opened up called La Carnita. And they ended up doing really well for themselves. And uh, that's where I first had this. Never even knew about it. Went there for tacos. Tacos being the, the focal point of the restaurant. And oddly enough, I fell for all their other dishes. To the point where I would go back there and just order apps. Because the tacos were good, but like, nah, the street corn. Uh, they had these... Uh, these ancho chipotle meatballs I still stress over them I can't get them anymore and the sauce mm, that they were sold in sold in drenched while well, they were sold in them but drenched in them was unbelievable this orangey brown, red. Almost like close to the consistency of mole. Ah, 
they were amazing. They're, the sauce was amazing. And you ever go to a restaurant and you're like, you're trying to, to deduce or reduce, like figure out what's in there. You try to make it at home and it just never gets there. And you're like, I don't really want to have to go back to the restaurant all the time, but like, how do you make this sauce? Cause I'm a saucy guy. Tacos were good though, for sure, at La, La Carnita. I'm sure somebody watching this video has probably eaten at one of the many La Carnitas that exist now in Toronto, because they did expand. And they, I think, I don't know how many locations they ended up with, but it was a good four to five, I think, ish. Because their food was good. And it was like young and hipster and fun and cool. And like, there's that aspect to it, right? It's gotta be like trendy and shit. But uh, their food was good. There's just no debating it. I'm uh, and I'm partial to a barbacoa. I'm a barbacoa kind of guy. Uh, anyways, like I was saying, balance is secured. Such a simple dish, amazing. You could eat it for a lunch or a dinner, and have it be. Uh, enough. It's not like you're going to be overloaded, but you're definitely going to be satisfied uh, if you have a few cobs, of course. And you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it doesn't take long. It's a, it's a 20 minute cook. It's a palatially, if we're calling it like palate wise, I don't know what the word is, but it's just, it's 4th of July in this bitch. It's like all in here. It's just, so you know what I mean? So Shout out Latin heritage, shout out Mexican food, shout out all of that, shout out 20 minute meals, shout out minimal ingredient meals, shout out cheap. Uh, yeah, cheap. There's com It's component wise, but shout out cheap meals. Shout out me, shout out you. It's all just two guns and love. Okay. To the next one, you know what to do. Sniff napkins, eat good. Live well and stay true. Okay. Thank you. If you like this content, please like, comment, and subscribe, as well as check out my pinned comment down below to find other ways to support this channel. Thank you for watching. Eat good, live well, and stay true.